Hello, this is Vern, and if you keep falling for men who break your heart despite your intelligence and best intentions. In today's video, I'm going to share the top three reasons this keeps happening to you and a simple three-step process you can follow starting today to stop this insanity and attract better men. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If this is your first time here, or you've been watching my videos for a while but haven't done this, and you want to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Listen, if you're watching this video, my guess is you've had your heart broken a few times, or maybe you're even going through it right now. And your heart broken, to me, means that you have expectations that are not being met by the partner that you've chosen, who supposedly chosen you. And this might range from you want more commitment than he's able or willing to give you. You want to get married and he's not ready for it. You want to move in together and he's still dragging his feet. You want to connect with his family and he's basically pushing you and holding you at an arm's length and not letting that happen. Maybe you want to start planning certain things and he's not willing to plan. Maybe you want more time with him. Now the relationship's evolved and he's still connecting with you once or twice a week and doesn't want to do more than that. Uh, whatever the case might be, you want more than you're getting right now. Or he might be focusing on somebody else. He might be, maybe, uh, he starts really strong and then starts slowly withdrawing to the point where you start feeling anxious and start feeling rejected. If that's something that you experience constantly, there are a few reasons, I'm going to share three with you right now, there's more, why this keeps happening that you need to understand to start making a shift. And then I also want to share with you specific things you can do to start changing and rewiring your attraction blueprint. So what is your attraction blueprint? Your attraction blueprint is a set of ideas, beliefs, and feelings that you have, many of them are subconscious, that help you choose and select a partner that you think will give you the type of experience you're looking for in love. The reason why I'm talking about this subject right now is because many of us don't take the time to really define what should our attraction blueprint be? And we just follow a pattern of some things we've learned from our parents, from our friends, from movies, television, romance novels. <laughs> and sometimes we hurt ourselves because we're going for things that are detrimental to the development of healthy, sustainable, passionate relationship. Before I share those specific steps you can start taking, if you want to understand how you can create a better dating strategy that you can execute starting today, that you can use to attract better quality men, that you can use to stop wasting time with the wrong guys, and you want to take these concepts further than this video, then make sure to hit this first link in the description of this video where you can start, you'll see a page that looks like this. Uh, if you enter your name and email, you can start watching my free masterclass right away. The first reason why you might be attracting and sustaining relationships with guys who break your heart is because you might be subconsciously going for intensity, overwhelming intensity, and sometimes quick overwhelming intensity versus sustainable love that requires depth and requires time and requires an investment in getting to know each other a little bit more. And in your mind, there is this concept of instant knowing of the one. First of all, the feeling that you might have one soulmate and it's the only one person in the world that will do it for you, which I think is BS by the way. Number two, you might be thinking that you, you should know. I mean, if you meet this person, your heart will let you know this is the person. So if you go on a date and you don't feel that feeling, then hell, it's not that person. So sometimes what happens is if you have that blueprint running in the background and you're not aware of it, you're going to feel strong levels of attraction to men who are bad for you, to men who have that capacity to be maybe slightly more gamish or more playful or maybe more masculine in a way that lacks commitment and your heart will interpret it as well. Uh, Disney told me that's the one, so this is the one, right? Or this is a high potential for me. And you start going all the way with that person without really noticing that he may not have the skills, he may not have the values, but it makes you feel good right in that moment. You feel seen and validated and special. So you let down your guard and you stop evaluating consciously. You let the subconscious part of your brain take over and you make the wrong decision. Second reason why you might be making the wrong decision with men who keep breaking your heart is because you're eliminating potential matches from your options by focusing on superficial factors 
that have no bearing into the depth and quality of an amazing relationship. For example, I've heard ridiculous statements like, he lives 35 minutes away from my house, that's too far away. You might be thinking, well, that's too much, I, I, I wouldn't do that. But maybe you say something like, well, he likes cats and I like dogs, and I think that's ridiculous. I mean, I just, I'm just being honest with you right now. <laughs> just keeping it real since we're having this chit-chat heart-to-heart. Or you might be saying, well, he needs to be taller than me. No, no, that one's unbreakable. He needs to be taller because he needs to be able to kill a rhinoceros and carry you to your bed. There's ideas that we have that if we don't examine them and if we think that we can change them, will put you in a category of evaluating, cutting off the possibility of men who might be the best partners of your life and focusing on those who meet the superficial criteria, but not the depth of values that you're truly seeking. Third reason is because if your feeling of scarcity is high, if you've been doing this for a while, not getting what you want, then you have probably a feeling of scarcity around men. So if you see one who, by the way, may not be the best fit for you, but your blueprint is targeted towards feeling of instant gratification or instant feeling of connection, then you're going to start feeling anxious around losing him. So instead of vetting him the right way, instead of connecting with him for, for longer, instead of asking the right questions, you're going to say, for him, I'll make a pass. He wants to have sex early? Sure. And then what happens? He commits to you, quote unquote, but he's not ready for you. You haven't realized that he's not in a position to offer you what he even thinks he can offer, but he can't. If you fall into any of these categories, there's specific things you can do to change this around. And the first one is an open understanding that there is no perfect partner. I know it sounds ridiculous and I shouldn't be having to say this, but there's a part of you that might be believing that there's this perfect partner, this is the one that is 99% of what you're looking for. That person does not exist. You have to be willing to make some compromises. You have to be willing to make some, uh, be flexible in your approach and go for what's really most important to you that's examined. Because there's things that you think, this is the most important thing for me. If you haven't examined it, it may not be the best thing for you. So you need to first examine what you really want and understand that even though the perfect partner doesn't exist, you're not perfect either. What you want is someone who has a high degree of compatibility with you, a high level of connection with you, and a feeling of passion and chemistry that is grounded in truth versus BS. So you find yourself attracting guys who break your heart. Here's what you do. First thing you do is you stop looking for explosions of the heart on day number one. Now, should you have someone that you feel super high, I mean, highly connected to, uh, who meets the other criteria and you can, you can pace yourself as you connect with them, great. But I ha I've had many women who share with me, I'm not going to date this guy again. And when we actually sit down and evaluate, as I do with my clients, okay, let's figure out specifically why you're saying no to this guy. Uh, is he attractive? Yeah, he's attractive. I just don't feel it for him. Okay, great. Uh, is he intelligent? He seems intelligent. Does he seem to share the values that you share? Yeah, he does seem to share the values. Is he kind? Yes, he walked me to my car. So why is it that you're not gonna see him again? Well, I just didn't feel it. And here's the thing that sometimes makes my, heart, my head explode. It's, if you didn't feel it the first day, it doesn't mean you're not gonna feel it the second or third day. I'm not, if by the third time you connect with him, you're not feeling it, cool, never see him again. But if you're saying no the first day because you're being anxiously expecting for your heart to explode and the angels sing and the oceans part and the earth to, to, to shatter at the moment that where your eyes meet, you're going for an illusion that is really hurting your chances. So give those guys a longer chance. Give those guys more time before you rule them out. Make sure that you're really vetting them from a place of openness versus saying, well, it didn't happen the first day, so it's never gonna happen. Number two is I need you to modify two superficial traits you're going for. If you've been going for, at this for a while, if you have a long list of items, qualities, virtues you're going for, and it's been months or years, and you haven't met the right guy, I need you to go through your list and select two things that are superficial in nature, the color of his skin, maybe his religion if you're not super religious, maybe his height, two things that are not superficial in nature, that are not necessarily values that, that you hold dear to your heart. When I said that thing about religion, if you're really religious and you're looking for one, like for a guy who's super religious, then go for that. But if you're not, but on your list is he should be Christian and you don't, you don't even go to church, then change that dynamic, please, and see what's possible for you. Number three, I need you to commit today to take longer to connect with a guy physically. 
And I know it's easy when you connect with a guy that doesn't do it for you, that doesn't make your knees feel weak. But when you connect with a guy who you feel is a super quality guy and you feel he's attractive and he's strong and sensitive and you feel that he's maybe super masculine, it's hard to say no to that. And I need you to be really cognizant of the danger, the Russian roulette game you play when you say yes to intimacy before you're ready. Why am I saying that? Because if you say yes to intimacy before you're ready, then your objective lenses will be thrown to the garbage and your chemistry will be running the show. And your chemistry, my friend, is going to make you see things that don't exist and prevent you from seeing things that do exist. And you wait, when you wake up from this honeymoon of uh, chemical dilution in your brain, you might recognize you're in for, an in for a world of pain. So take longer, take more time for that physical intimacy, Take more time for that, obviously, for sex, which is beyond just physical intimacy, and, and see what can happen. Last item that I'll share with you today is when you find a guy that you really jive with, uh, and it's just starting to happen, do not stop dating other men. Why? Because when you stop dating other men, and you're really into a guy who really hasn't been vetted to be your guy, who hasn't shown you in actions, which, by the way, is the only thing that really matters, when push comes to shove, the actions that he steps into in your life. I mean, his intentions are good, but his actions are what, where the magic happens. When you connect with someone and you continue connecting with other guys, then what happens is you're going to be more objective in your evaluation of him. You're going to be able to see things that you wouldn't have seen. You're going to be feeling less needy because this guy is not your de facto boyfriend. He's just a guy that you're highly interested in. Take more time is my message. Take, take this process of dating into a slower pace, which is just weird and an oxymoron that by taking it slower, you can get married faster. Why? Because you stop wasting time with all, all those starts and stops and guys who break your heart and guys who don't do it for you. Take longer to connect with him. Take longer to vet him. Take longer to understand who he is and start date by date, rewiring what you go for. So you, what your heart ends up seeking is what is best for you. Hope this is helpful and useful. If you like this video, please make sure to learn more by going to the first link in the description. Uh, click like or subscribe or both. <laughs> and last but not least, if you want my hand holding and help, you don't want to waste time attempting the trial and error route that many people go through and you want to have me help you attract the guy that you want in a fraction of the time, second link in the description will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and conscious life.